I'm joined today by NCHA sponsor, Mr. Sean Ryan of Sean Ryan Western Store and Saddle Shop. Sean sponsors more than $80,000 worth of trophy saddles annually to Super Stakes and Summer Cutting Spectacular Champions. He's an avid cutter himself and his family has had quite a history with the NCHA. Sean, tell us a little bit about your family's involvement with cutting and the NCHA. Well, our family's been sponsoring the NCHA, I guess, since the very beginning of the, the association. Uh, you know, my granddad gave, I know, one saddle in 59 that John Carter won. And uh, so we, we've been doing it for several years, and we've been giving the saddles uh, here for the NCHA for uh, probably around 15 years. And uh, so we do the uh, super stakes, the non-pro, the open, and the amateur champion, and the four-year-old and the five- and six-year-old. We also do it for the uh, Summer Spectacular also. So after a Super Stakes or Summer Spectacular Classic Challenger Derby Champion wins a saddle, what is the process that follows that? Well, the great thing about what we do when we give these saddles is the, the person who wins it, they can come in, they can pick the tree, pick the saddle, the seat size. So we actually, we build them a custom saddle and it's hopefully something that they'll ride, <clears throat> which which you can see that a lot of the times in, you know, in the finals during the fraternity, we had several, several of the saddles that people have worn out there riding and got to the finals of the fraternity, which that's kind of neat to see. So how long has Sean Ryan's been around? Well, we've been in business since 1989. My family's been in the saddle business since the early 40s. But you operate out of a storefront in the stockyards of Fort Worth too, correct? Yes, we have a, the store in the stockyards and the saddle shop. We build everything right there in the shop. Uh, we do about 25 shows a year, so we're on the road pretty hard, following, following his cutters down the road, so keeps us busy. You guys keep a fairly large booth space at these trade shows, huh? Yeah, we try to really portray a, you know, a, a good selection of what we carry, what we're about. You know, I think it's just really important at the three major events, you know, the Super Stakes, the, the Summer Spectacular, and the, and the Fraternity, just to really, you know, show everybody what we do, what we're about. So that way, if they do come through Fort Worth on, on, on business or just on pleasure, they maybe they'll stop by the store and, and uh, look forward to come in and see us in the shop. With straw season currently in effect and felt season approaching this fall, Sean is going to give us some insight on the rules that go along with hat wearing in addition to some shaping tips and insight. Well, there's two rules of thumb with that. You know, some people, you know, they'll switch over to straw hats the first day of spring. And then... The other rule of thumb is Easter. So it just kind of depends on maybe what, what part of the country you're from, uh, how hot it is where you live, but that's typically the, uh, the rule of thumb. Okay, Sean, with the change of seasons approaching, tell us a little bit more about wearing a straw hat versus a felt hat. The first thing you've got to do is, is try some on. It's like trying on a pair of boots or trying on a pair of jeans. I mean, you need to try them on. You know, most of the, your better hats, or all ha hats, have a hand-sewn sweatband. So they will vary maybe just a little bit. So you want to try several on, get the proper fit. Some people have more of a long oval, some people have more of a round oval, and you want to, you know, you want to fit that oval to your head. <coughs> uh, secondly, you know, would be the quality of hat. You know, what you're going to do with it. If it's going to be more of a work hat, everyday hat, or more of a dress hat. And most of the guys, it's, it's, it's more of the the style. Uh, you know, a lot. Of, one of the things that are really popular right now are the open crown. The open crown straws are real popular. And the good thing about the open crown is you can get that unique uh, shape and style that you like on, on your hat that that person, it's kind of like getting your hair cut, the, the way you want it done. And that gives you a lot more flexibility when you start with an open crown. And your better straws, as long, along with your, your better felt hats, they all, all, the better bodies come open crown. Plus, you can get them straight on somebody's head. If they like the crown tall, they like it low, you can modify that with the shaping. Sean, your company shapes hundreds of hats each year. Can you walk us through the process of how to shape a hat? And the first thing you want to do is, uh, is the center vent. You want to make sure when you're shaping the hat that the center vent is, is even with the person's head. So it's good to put the hat on, mark it, make sure it goes between your eyes. Because probably three out of five hats that I put on people that are open crown, I'll move it either to the left or to the right, anywhere from a quarter of an inch to an inch. So majority of the people, you do you will move it just a smidgen from one side to the other, so they're not always perfectly straight with the hat itself. 
That way you get it to where it, you know, it looks like it's normal or straight on your head. Then from that point, once you get the center vent centered in, in the crown, you, you go to the height, the higher the lower depth that somebody would want through the center crease. Once you get that done, you go you start with the side vents. And that's also something that's optional if you want them real shallow or real deep. And we put the side vents in on the left side and then on the right side. A lot of people like to have the cutter bumps. The cutter bumps actually is a purpose for that. You know, you, you put the little bumps in the sides of the crown, the vents in the crown, and it actually allows you to have a little bit more room so when you're pulling that hat down on your head, it'll make the hat feel uh, more snug, more secure on your head. And people who rope, cut, bull riding, saddle bronc, you'll notice that they will, barrel racing, they'll, they'll pull their hat down on their head pretty good because they don't want to lose it. Uh, some people, you know, if they're just sitting in the stands, they want it, may want it a little bit looser, not as tight. So it might be a little more comfortable that way. And then from that point, you start on the brim. Uh, one of the things that are really popular in style have been for, for oh gosh, for probably 20, 25 years is kind of the George, I call it the kind of a George Strait crease or a cutter crease. It's kind of got more of the square front and that's kind of evolved from George Strait's about the time all that really became popular and it's one of the styles that have probably stayed around longer than 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 maybe just a standard cattleman crease than any other shape that, that we've ever had um, as far as a, a trendy style. So a lot of what we do, you know, we'll, we'll start with the side vents, get the, get the little dish in the back of the brim, get the square in the front of the crown, the get the square even in the front of the brim. Typically you try to keep the square to where it's about the width of your outside of your eyes. It's about where I try to keep it, it's the outside between your forehead and the outside of your of your eyes, your temple. That, it's kind of a rule of thumb. Some people like it a little narrower, some people like it wider. It's a personal preference once again. Then you go in, then you start. Once I get the square started with the wire, because there is a wire all the way around that brim, then you go in and you start putting the one one side. I start on one I start one side at a time. Start with the left side, get it good and tight. That way the brim has a better chance of holding and won't try to flatten out or lose its shape. So you do it, I do it, I, I like to shape them fairly sharp, fairly tight, that way they seem to hold a lot better. Then basically you do the same thing on the left side of the brim. And I'll use the brim and the whole underneath proportion of the hat to make sure I'm staying even. And also the customer's head. Start with the left side of the, right side of the brim. Do the same thing. Then pull the dip down the front, and the dip is also a, a personal preference. Some people don't like very much dip. Some people like a lot, like it extreme. So once again, there's a lot of things when you're shaping a hat from open crown or any hat that you get a lot of personal characteristics in that in particular hat for that one individual. Do you find it easier to shape a felt hat over a straw? Oh, I think felts are much, much easier to, to, to shape. They're much more forgiving, and the felts will do what you want them to do. You have a good felt hat. Oh, that's just like, you know, having working with clay. It just molds right to what you want it to do. Straws, on the other hand, you have to manipulate them a little more. There's a wire in the brim. They've got a shellac. It's an actual uh, a material that's been woven together. So there's a lot more um, things you have to deal with to get that that same look. So it's it's a, it's a lot more difficult to to shape a straw. And once a straw hat is shaped, it's not as forgiving, correct? No, you can modify them a little bit, but you, yeah, they're not near as forgiving as a felt hat. 